So here's the question I'm going to pose in a time of incredible tribalism, incredible division, heated, passionate, important differences among brothers and sisters in Christ. How do we solve the Rubik's Cube of speaking passionately about very important macro ideologies in the church, macro issues, juggernaut issues, huge things that really matter, and yet still maintain what we're called to do, which is be unified in Christ, uh, care for your brother and sister who disagrees with you. That to me appears to be the Herculean effort of the last year. And I'll be honest with you, I have no idea how to do that. I know some people in life that are gifted with the temperance, the wisdom, the footing of a mountain goat. I look at Jesus and I see somehow he was both able to throw down with the Pharisees and throw down in many ways with the orthodoxy of his day and the thinking of his day and the power of his day, the corruption of his day, and somehow still empower the individual, still validate the individual. Of all the new ways to be human that Jesus example, perhaps this is the most mysterious. Grace, truth, in one moment. Truly extraordinary, actually. I will confess that is the desire of my heart. And oftentimes not what I find at the end of my words, at the end of my endeavors. And, and I imagine in many ways you guys relate to that in your own way. And yet still, we live in serious times. And there is example after example after example of great men and women of faith showing courage, bravery, speaking truth to power, saying things that are uncomfortable, pushing back on things that are wrong. It's made even more challenging in a day that views everything as personal. Our culture has become shockingly narcissistic if you really think about it. Every word we hear, every image we see, everything said in our surrounding, it always gets turned styled and cattle shooted into me. So somebody can be speaking about something on an ideological level. And in 2021, it's all about me. Everything gets seen through the lens of our own movie, our self-importance. As if somebody who's criticizing an ideology is criticizing you. And our identities are all jacked up because the truth is, when somebody talks about some problem in the world, they're not really talking about you or me personally. So you have to ask yourself what's happened to us that we're all so thin-skinned or narcissistic or whatever the case may be that we can't even hear an idea about something we would all agree is important without turning into like a kindling box of emotions and personal grievance. It makes the task of his church, which is a motley crew of disposition and experiences and pasts and childhoods, socioeconomics, skin color, culture, it makes that motley crew of broken and fallen believers who attempt to live together increasingly difficult. And yet, when I look at his disciples, they were the exact same. I mean, these cats were totally different than one another, totally different perspectives, totally different politics. If you read Acts and you read his churches, you see a train wreck. These people are fumbling the ball big time. There's lecture after lecture after lecture after lecture. In fact, Philadelphia is the only one that gets the two thumbs up. So these guys were really struggling with this stuff. But in my lifetime, I've never seen it this challenging. How do we find unity among believers that disagree so intensely? I don't know. I think we're at the end of ourselves, to be perfectly honest with you. Anything that duct tape could have done was all completely blown up by a year of pandemic. Because what came out of that soil was everything that was real. All the stuff we would sweep under the rug, that real estate is gone. We're down to the marrow of the bone, and yet we're called to do it, right? I mean, what's different about the church from the world right now? In this respect, very little. And yet these people that just tell you to kumbaya the whole situation, they're lying too, because these are very, very, very serious differences. Both sides, have moralized everything. Every issue is moralized now. So there's no fluff, there's no margin. It's just metal on metal. I'm not in the continue to pretend that we're not in deep disagreement camp. 
And I'm not in the throw the towel in, just become some homogenous, intellectually inbred group of believers that never challenge you, never edify you camp. So by 2021 standards, I'm in the utopic camp, I guess, because I don't really see a great example of this right now. Everybody's just fleeing to their own, seeking out the messages that scratch their ear. I've thought about this. To ground yourself in his word, to be a man or a woman of conviction, to know what you believe and to be able to vet that in a watertight way with his word, not with the cultural trends, not with the cultural Johnny Come Lightly trends, but his word. Once you do that, to then speak definitive truths which will inevitably ruffle a culture in such a way, example by our savior that ends at the cross, right? This is uh, baked into the cake of our path as believers. We will upset the world. That's because the truth threatens all that stuff. It points to an inverted reality than the one that we've staked our claims in, built our fortunes in, built these empires of lies upon. To be a person of conviction, to voice that conviction passionately among your peers is not wrong. It's not immoral. It's not a bad look. It doesn't tarnish a testimony. In a very strange, counterintuitive way, I think people who know what they believe, I think that has a strange magnetism in this time of complacency, compliance. There's a real courage in that. Even if it means falling on your sword by way of the world standards, even if it means some form of cultural martyrdom, even if it means losing favor with people that you love. I see that example in Jesus. He exampled it perfectly and none of us will, but I think that example is there. When we see people doing that, even if we deeply disagree with them, maybe we just stop for one moment and we respect the action itself. We ask ourselves, you know, does somebody have something to gain from this personally? Is there cost to them doing this? Does this require a certain degree of courage in the time that we live in? If you can answer yes to stuff like that, then at the very least, we can offer that person human respect, even when we don't agree with the next thing that comes out of their mouth. That action in and of itself is Christ-like. I think we have to allow room for our dispositional differences, for our gifting differences, for the ways that we were meant to interact with, refine, and light up the dark in this world. We're not all the same. We're different. And that's a beautiful thing in a healthy church. And then we need some sort of miracle. Anyway, that's what I think right now. It's an evolving process in my head. What do you think? Audrux, Claudine, Production. What? How about the truth?